Lamont Farrell has spent more than two decades in the industry. He's written and produced for more than a dozen TV shows, including the hit show Girlfriends and Moishu. So, as well as Parenthood. Oh, Parenthood. That was one of my favorites, too. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. So, first of all, let's talk about um, uh, the, the whole strike and, and residuals. A lot of the issue, too, is that it's now streaming, and streaming's a lot different, right? There aren't as many episodes as there were in terrestrial TV. Streaming is sometimes Absolutely. shorter, but talk about residuals because those aren't as high as well. So it's not just on the front end, but on the back end that writers are saying we need our fair share. Yeah, residuals are, are, are the lifeline of a writer, you know. Um, fortunately, it's a business where you work and you write a TV series. When it re-airs, you get, continue to get paid for that series. Fortunately, I get paid for a show that I wrote. 20 years ago, like the parenthood, you know, in, in, the, in, in the early uh, uh, mid 90s. But today, with the streaming services, unlike when I began writing with the, you know, four big networks ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox, now with the Hulus and the Amazons and the Netflix of the world, you know, people are watching those shows not only here in the US, but all around the world. You can binge watch 100 episodes, you know, in the weekend. So that business model has to be changed, and those residuals aren't what they used to be. And they're shorter now because uh, typically on network television, uh, full season is 22 episodes, right. uh, where on streaming series, I'm sure you guys watch them as well, right. most of those shows are six episodes, eight, maybe ten, and obviously that, that's half of what we typically would have worked if we worked on regular uh, network television. You know, listen, I, what's... People will feel the impact of this, <clears throat> primarily with the late night hosts, Saturday Night Live, yeah. things like that. So the, mm -hmm. the, that will be the immediate uh, impact uh, mm -hmm. uh, of this, and we'll see how it plays out. The last time we saw one of these it lasted 100 days. That's you know three months. That's that's a while. I that's was, a yeah. long time. I was, I was part of that. You remember that obviously. Yeah. But for for folks watching who don't understand, you know, all of us sit on the couch and watch whatever show we yeah. love, right? But it, explain to everyday folks who don't understand the business and the process of TV, kind of how integral the writers. Are, especially in this expanding universe of, of streaming. I feel like every time I go on the TV, there's 12 million shows I can pick from. Somebody's yeah. got to write it, somebody's yeah. got to shoot it, somebody's got to direct it. So talk for, for just, just an average viewer sitting on their couch right now watching you this. You know, I mean, this is something I talk about all the time. I'm also a professor. I teach uh, uh, at USC, University of Southern California. I'm a screenwriting professor there, and I talk to my students about this all the time. Fortunately, you know, in our business, nothing can happen and get started without the writer. Nothing. You can't build a set, you can't cast actors, you can't the craft service people come in and feed us all. You know, they don't know what the how many food to order because until the script is done. And so everything starts with the writer. And I think that a lot of times we aren't put on the bottom of the uh, of the totem pole. And so, like you mentioned, Saturday Night Live, uh, um, all the um, late night talk shows will immediately have to cease because they don't have writers writing that material. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people watch television and they watch and they enjoy and they laugh or they cry depending on you're watching a comedy or a drama, but someone is writing every single one of those words like myself, you know, and I write, right, you know, right, right, yeah. as you see. And all um, those guys are funny on their own and they're all great comedians, yeah. but, but every night that monologue, somebody else so, largely so, is writing that stuff. Yeah. writing that stuff. Yeah. I mean, as funny as, you know, a lot of those guys are, they're writing that, you know. And, and let me ask you too about the progression of a, of a writer's um, profession. So oftentimes there was a ladder for writers to sort of move up into more producing and directing as well as writing where they can take more ownership of a show. Yes. But lately has this sort of diminished that where it's not giving, because of streaming, it's not giving these writers the opportunities to grow like they were to, to, to advance in the field. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm at that point. I've been writing, fortunately, for over 20 years. So I'm a writer as well as a producer. I produce a bunch of shows, and I'm actually starting to direct. I directed a pilot this, this past summer. Mm -hmm. And um, right now, with the streaming shows, like I mentioned, you know, you would get in a situation where you could work 13 episodes, maybe 22 episodes, but now with the streaming services, there are a lot less. So they're almost turning this into almost a gig worker where yeah. you're coming in, you do six episodes, and then you're done, and they'll all come to places like here in Georgia, and they'll just shoot them, and they're kind of pushing the, you know, the writer you know, out. So we're not on sets as longer. Our, our weeks are getting paid, and working on a series is, is not um, as long. And they've been preparing for this. So now some of those shows will continue because they've stockpiled a lot of scripts mm -hmm. for the next couple of months, especially with movies, because once you get the script done in the movie, 
they can continue to shoot it and get higher actors. Uh, but uh, when those run out, if this strike continues like last time over you know several months, then uh, you're going to need a writer to write to write that material. And without us. You know, you're not your favorite shows aren't going to be on television. We're going to see a lot more live TV too. Yeah. Those are reality TVs. Well, that's what happened during the last yeah. like uh, 2007 when I was part of that. You saw a lot of these major uh, reality shows that you see today came out of that, and so you just don't know what the future is, especially with technology. Now they're talking about artificial intelligence, uh. where they were having robots actually try to program to write scripts. So that's another thing that we're fighting for. That's amazing. No, that's right. it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Great, and, great. More Love Island. And I was just thinking we <laughs> really need more reality TV. So exactly. good morning, Real Housewives of right, Davenport, right. Iowa. Uh, but um, <laughs> uh, a bigger picture, too, here. Pro, uh, this is according, this is in the reporting in the Times this morning. Uh, mm -hmm. Prolonged production shutdown could also lead, could also prove damaging to local economies, particularly yeah. the workers who help support productions, the drivers, uh, the costume dry cleaners, the caterers, the set carpenters, the young lumberyard workers. The last time they, uh, we had a strike like this, they estimated that L.A. lost $2.1 billion yeah. in its economy. Right. So it's more than just the writers. There's an industry around the industry. It's, it shuts it, the whole industry it's, down. It's the whole industry. I was on the picket line in 2007 in L.A., uh, walking up and down the street with, with my picket sign, and people would blow the horn. You would see traffic. They would Go back to work. Come on, back to work. We need you guys because it's a really, like you said, it's a triple down effect, especially in, in towns like Los Angeles, New York, here in, in, in Georgia. Uh, you have uh, uh, people who, who aren't directly working in behind this camera or in front of the camera, but they're affected, like you said, with the dry cleaning, with the craft service. That's a huge industry that feeds all, the, all, of, all of the crews. The sound stages, that's a huge industry. The drivers, the teamsters who drive everyone around, all, those people will not be working. So it's not just the writers and the actors and right. directors and producers, it's thousands upon thousands of people who yeah. work out of work. And Camera, quick, lighting, all of that. All of that, the technical crew. Real quick before we let you go, just so for average folks can understand, for a mildly successful show, not like you know a Succession or something, what or, or, or Colbert or whatever, uh, what what is the rough salary range for for a writer? How much are you know? Cause obviously, we're seeing a familiar debate. We want more money. The world's changed. We deserve yeah. our cut. I got it. The companies are going to say, oh, we we're not you know revenues down. A lot of the companies have had layoffs, tough times. We can't afford to give you what you want. And obviously, the truth is somewhere in the middle. But so the everyday folks saying, oh, it's Hollywood. Explain what what do you think the range is for writers who are well, complaining you know, about it, themselves? It, it's, it, again, it, this great question, but it's a little difficult to answer specifically because it depends on where you're working. And I'm going to give you the answer, but if it's network, you're going to make more money because it's the bigger the network, ABC, NBC, CBS. Sure. Cable, you're going to make a little less because you don't have the, the, the viewership and it's the mm -hmm. viewers. Streaming is somewhere, you know, in, in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, but a writer, you can make six figures. You can make over $100,000, which is, you know, a substantial amount of money. But you got to remember that it's not consistent because, right. you know, if you go work at a, a, a bank or you go work at a, 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 um, a financial industry or even at a Home Depot, you're getting a salary year after year after year because as long as you work there. A TV series could last two, two years or could last 10 years, you know, or could last two Six months. Six months, yeah. Yeah, it all, it all depends. So That's why everybody um, wants syndication. Well, no, you're, you're right. <laughs> you're not right. right. Unfortunately, part of shows are going to syndication, but during those down times that we're not working, the shows do get canceled, and everybody watches, oh, my favorite show got canceled. But we're out of work. And yeah. so without those residuals to continue us to help us and help us, you know, to, to our next, next job, job yeah. you know, it could be, be really difficult. So, do you think this lasts... As long as the other one, the one before. No, is this going to be tough? Tougher? I, it's going to be tough just because I think you have, you know, mm. nowadays they see how much money they can make in the streaming services, you know, the streaming industry and the writers. We know uh, what's, what's at stake here and no one wants to budge. So I hope it doesn't go 100 days again. But if it does, I'm, I might be here uh, uh, trying to get a job with you guys. Hey, come we, on. we need the help <laughs> and the bodies. So <laughs> open invitation, my friend. There you go. We got a fourth chair yes. somewhere. We'll bring there it you know, around. I'll stand up. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> See, team player, we like that. Lamont, good luck. Thank, thank you back. very much. Keep us yes. updated. And, I appreciate uh, you. Yes. Yeah, thank you guys for having Keep me. us posted, All right. please. Thank yes. you. Thank you.